I know you can't like super see my shirt today, but it's a Taylor Swift shirt from the Midnight's, you know, merch that came late. It was supposed to be a Christmas present. And so if you remember when I was telling you about the story about how Mr. Soap and Clay ended up being able to snag tickets for the Eras tour and the lottery system and everything, I guess it also related to how much money you've spent on Taylor Swift's merch site. And uh, considering all of the Taylor Swift things he's purchased for me over the years and holidays and anniversaries and reasons to give people things, it really does actually make sense as to why he was uh, selected at that point. So it's not exactly lucky as much as they ran the list and went, Mr. Soap and Clay is the biggest Taylor Swift fan in the world. But anyway, new Swift merch. I'm very excited about it. So I'm wearing it. You're probably going to see me in it a lot because it's very comfy. And I have stained my Auroras and Sad Pros shirt to high heaven with all manner of soap oils. It's ruined forever. So this is going to be my new I'm always wearing it thing. That has nothing whatsoever to do with what we are making today. Like that, there's not even a way that I can think all that. That's, that was a lot. But I will tell you what FAQ we are tackling today in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for week 12 of year three in another video in the FAQ week, wherein we are taking a whole video, but a short video, to answer one question in a way that is hopefully succinct and retainable, all the things. And today we are focusing on polysorbates. Now there are a lot of different types of polysorbates out there and honestly because we don't do a whole lot with the actual cosmetic stuff with the sterile alcohols and the acetyls, the SEI and SLSA, I know that I've done some videos on it or I've talked about all of these different pieces that don't directly relate to soap in other videos but I haven't done a detailed this is just about polysorbates or this is just about sterile alcohols or the fatty alcohols or whatever bit. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to be talking about polysorbates, all of the different types, what they're all good for, what it all means, like what it even is, and how you should select them based on the product that you want to make. We're going to do that while I'm making the title Durden, and so I think it should be a nice fast and dirty video, and I should be able to explain all of it, but you know, let's go to the video and see how I fare really. Okay, so first up, what are polysorbates? Well, polysorbates are non-ionic surfactants or emulsifiers. The non-ionic bit means that it has, you know, uh, uncharged head groups, right? Okay, that are primarily used for our purposes, well, for all purposes in, you know, medicine as well as food and cosmetics, really to stabilize whatever solution that you are making. Thus the emulsifier bit. Now polysorbates are made with basically combining ethers with sorbitan, which is a dehydrated form of sorbitol, with esters and fatty acids. There's a lot going on here. We've got esters and ethers and all the things. Now for our purposes, we work with four different types of polysorbates, right? So we have polysorbate 20, polysorbate 40, polysorbate 60, and polysorbate 80. Now Really, what you're looking at with those different numbers has everything to do with essentially the fatty acid ester combination that is used to create 
said product. So polysorbate 20 is created using monolaurate, which is the ester of lauric acid. Polysorbate 40 is made using monopalmitate, which is the ester of palmitic acid. Polysorbate 60 is made using monostearate, which is the ester of stearic acid. And polysorbate 80 is made using monooleate, which is the ester of oleic acid. And you are all familiar with all of those fatty acid names. Lauric, palmitic, stearic, oleic. You get that. Those are our soaping oils, right? So those are the only differences between polysorbate 20, 40, 60, or 80. The fatty acid ester that is used to create each of those. Okay? So easy enough right now. Well, first things first, we've already explained the differences in numbers because those numbers are just there to distinguish between the four different things. It's not suggesting that more of one thing is added than another, right? It's just suggesting what type of ester, fatty acid ester, is used to actually create the product. So now we, that we have that figured out, how do we determine what type of polysorbate we need for whatever, you know, product that we're making, right? Like, why do we use polysorbate 80 in bath bombs? Why don't we use 20? How about 40 or 60? What are the purposes of each of these? And a lot of that does go back to the fatty acid chains themselves and what the properties are of the fatty acids that are used to create the polysorbate. So let's talk about that. Okay, so first up, when we are talking about polysorbates, the big thing to keep in mind is that because of the way it's created, you are going to have basically the exact same results across all of the polysorbates in the products that you're going to use them in. But because of the fatty acid esters that are used to produce either 20, 40, 60, or 80, one polysorbate really shines more over another depending on the application or the product that you're ultimately making. So just keep that in mind. In a pinch, you can substitute, you know, 80 for 20 or vice versa in a lot of cases. But we're going to go ahead and talk about the finer points of these polysorbates and really what they should be used in, in cosmetics within the rest of this. So you kind of know why we have so many different options anyway. So first up, polysorbate 20 because of the fatty acid ester that is used for it, it's really going to be a very good polysorbate to use in something like room sprays over something like a lotion. And that's because it doesn't really do well with the heavier oils. So when you are doing a, you know, again, like a room spray or a fragrance or something, it's very good for that because the oil substrates that you're putting into those tend to be not a lot and also very, very lightweight. Think essential oils, fragrance oils, etc. For something that has like a proper oil, like an apricot or an avocado or a sunflower, you probably were gonna get better results going with a different polysorbate. As far as usage rate and price, it's pretty similar to polysorbate 80. So the usage rate is between one and 20% and price is, I don't know, around 11 bucks a pound realistically. So it's very close to polysorbate 80. Now, polysorbate 40 is one of those very interesting polysorbates in that it's not, I don't exactly remember what happened, but the FDA, I think, effectively deemed polysorbate 40 not an approved emulsifier on its own. And so therefore it could be used as a food additive, but you had to use a different emulsifier with it. So as a result, for us in the States at least, polysorbate 40 is hard to come by. So that's that for polysorbate 40. Since polysorbate 40 is, you know, kind of hard to come by, that's really all we're gonna do for that one because we're looking at the ones that we can reasonably and easily get. So polysorbate 60. Now this is one of the outliers, right? Polysorbate 60, because of what it does within fatty alcohols, which is something that you commonly find within conditioners, 
as opposed to a lotion where you don't really have any. So we're talking about the cetyl alcohols at L, right? It really shines within conditioners more than anything else. And so that is a really good, you know, polysorbate to use for a solid conditioner or a liquid conditioner, what have you. And also the max usage on polysorbate is only one to 3%. So you're definitely using it more as an additive than realistically a proper stands on its own emulsifier. So that's something to keep in mind for polysorbate 60. Now polysorbate 80 that we all know and love, it's actually very, very versatile. It can be used in really all applications. So your linen sprays, your lotions, your solid lotions, your conditioners, and we also tend to use it in bath products and, you know, so bath bombs or bath, bubble bath and all of that to essentially create a product that when it hits the water, it will emulsify within the water of the tub. Now, that's important with polysorbates in general because polysorbates as an emulsifier, they are oil in water solutions. So not water in oil. Now, an example of that would be a lotion, you know, because lotion is primarily water. Another example of that would also be a bathtub because whatever small amount of oils that you have in your bath bomb or your bubble bath, those are the oils that you are putting into the ultimate end receptacle, which is the water. So you want to disperse that oil into the water. So while it may seem confusing that we would put a polysorbate into a bath bomb or a bubble bath that contains little to no water and little to no oils, remember your fragrance oils, your essential oils count as an oil. And also we usually put a little bit of oil or butters, what have you, into our bubble baths, especially if they're solid. But you know, no water, but the end result is what you're thinking of for the purposes of these emulsifiers. You want all those oils to properly disperse into the water. Get it? So yeah, polysorbate 80, it's about the same price as all the rest of them. You know, it's around 11 bucks a pound, just like with 20 and 60. And its max usage rate is between one and 20%. And again, a very versatile product. And realistically, that's why we see polysorbate 80 in so many applications, because it is easy to source. It is very versatile and, you know, it works reasonably well across all of the products that we would make in cosmetics. In reality, polysorbates 20 and 60 and really 40, if you can find it, if it's used at all, they're really primarily going to be used in food and, you know, medicinal applications as wetting agents for food. That doesn't mean that you can't use polysorbate 20 or 60 within your cosmetics. They do work. Like I said, basically because you're using a polysorbate, it's going to be basically the same performance. We do have a couple exceptions though, as we have talked about, you know, within this. As far as, you know, polysorbate 40 and what it does, I really don't know. I have never used polysorbate 40, so I can't give you like real world examples of what it all you know, actually does within any of the, the products because it is hard to come by. So there's that. That is the down and dirty on all of the polysorbates, what they all mean, what the differences are, what you should use if you can substitute. I hope I answered all of the questions, but you know, if I didn't, ask them below and I'll see if I can answer them, you know, in the comments. And there it is, all things polysorbates, their uses, the different types, and, you know, when you should select a 20 over an 80 or, you know, what have you. So, I hope that you guys found that informative and useful. Definitely nice to have a nice little primer out there for things like this because, yeah, it can definitely be a confusing thing. Speaking of that, because we spend a lot less time researching and even buying things like polysorbates or the fatty alcohols like cetals or ceterols or whatever... If you would like a dedicated video to another group of these, for example, fatty alcohols, let me know. I'm more than happy to do that because it actually can get sort of confusing when you're looking on a website that has four different types of polys and this one's cheap. So can I use this one? Why do I have to use this one? What is the rationale? Can I substitute? What can I substitute with? All the things. Same goes for acetyl versus ceteral versus all kinds of fatty alcohols. So if you want that one, let me know for sure. I hope you guys had fun today. As I said, 
Thank you so much for joining me. You are amazing. Big thank you to the Sudzers. You guys are epically amazing. Thank you for being my humans for sure. I'm going to go because actually I have some ornaments that also came in late, like some baubles, Taylor Swift baubles for the Christmas tree that's gone, right? Because I'm a normal human that didn't keep my tree up until July this year. That was last year. And I want to go open those up and check out all the ornaments. So I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy FAQ fun. Bye.